I believe that's it for my sort of like quick intro. Kick it off to Willie, um, who again is the excellent teaching artist behind the bilingual YouTube series Arte with Maestro William, as well as many other beautiful works of art that sort of engage community, think through public space. Um, yeah, in your hands now, Willie. Hi everyone, thank you all for being here. Let me share my screen and then we can get started. All right, so my name is William Estrada. I'm a visual artist um, and an educator. And, um, you know, today we're gonna be thinking about, you know, Arte with Maestro William uh, and thinking about the pedagogy behind um, some of the making and definitely thinking about my, my thinking in, in this and how the, you know, how the work that I've been doing across um, as a teaching artist, as a educator, and, um, and as a parent and, and person has been thinking about it, right? So, but in all transparency, you know, just letting you know, I'm a, a little bit nervous. I always get super, super nervous when I'm doing these things. Uh, although I've been, you know, teaching for like 20 plus years. <laughs> Every time I do something new, um, you know, it always gets me a little bit uh, shaky, but um, but yeah, I'm a visual arts teacher at uh, the Bochcali Elementary in Little Village. Uh, it's a pre-K through eighth grade. Um, I'm also a teaching artist and I work for multiple arts organization across the city of Chicago. Today I'm gonna be focusing a lot of my work uh, in an after school art program with uh, Chicago Arts Partnership and Education. And I also do teacher training at uh, the School of Art and Art History at um, UIC, um, where we train, um, uh, artists uh, to become uh, high school art teachers. So the big conversation today that I wanted to start this with um, this presentation was uh, play as radical act. Um, and I, you know, want to frame the conversation that I'm having with you all today around play, because I think as adults, we don't always get the opportunity to play. Um, we see play as um, an act of children, right? And I think uh, it's really important for us to think about what it means for us to be exploring um, and making. And I want to lead off with this uh, quote from Pablo Neruda that says, the child who does not play is not a child, but the person who does not play has lost forever the child who lived within them and who they will miss, miss terribly. And with that, I wanted uh, to start off um, by reading you the book called, children's book called Life Doesn't Frighten Me, which is based on a poem by Maya Angelou and the paintings are by um, Jean-Michel Basquiat. And the poem goes something like this. I'm gonna try and see if I can do it as, um, as it goes, but. Shadows on the wall, noises down the hall. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Bad dogs barking loud. Big ghost in a cloud. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Mean old mother goose, lines on the loose. They don't frighten me at all. Dragons breathing flame on my counterpane. That doesn't frighten me at all. I go boo, make them shoo. I make fun, away they run. I won't cry, so they fly. I just smile, they go wild. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Tough guys fight all alone at night. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Panthers in the park, strangers in the dark. No, they don't frighten me at all. That new classroom where boys all pull my hair, kissy little girls with their hair in curls, they don't frighten me at all. Don't show me frogs and snakes and listen for my scream. 
If I'm afraid at all, it's only in my dreams. I've got a magic charm that I keep up my sleeve. I can walk the ocean floor and never have to breathe. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Not at all. Not at all. Life doesn't frighten me at all. En color incolorado, este <laughs> cuento se ha acabado. <laughs> um, the reason why I started with that is uh, obviously because um, you know, doing new things can be, um, you know, it can be scary, right? And I think as adults, uh, we're constantly told that, you know, in order for us to be professional or be perceived as professional, you know, we should always know what we're talking about. And I think one of the things that I try to do and I try to instill in, you know, the folks that I'm working with and learning and, and teaching with is uh, this idea of vulnerability and failure. Right. Um, and it's something that, uh, you know, as a teacher at the Pochkali and as a teaching artist with Chicago Arts Partnership, you know, CAPE was definitely one of the first organizations, if not the first organization that when I failed, you know, they asked me, you know, um, what did you learn? Right. And, and how can you apply that learning to the next project that you do? Um, and one of the things that has been really interesting is as we've been setting up, um, you know, these videos, when I first started, when, you know, we started uh, transitioning into this uh, remote learning, um, I felt a little lost, you know, a lot of my work is as a visual artist and as a teacher, you know, I definitely feed off the energy of the students of the community members that I'm working with, you know, and I felt a little bit paralyzed, you know, as to how I could transition the work that I do, um, that I feel I do really well in person into this uh, virtual space, you know, and uh, CAPE ended up creating this CAPE Network Forum that really pushed our thinking as teaching artists, as teachers, as um, artists, you know, and thinking about what uh, teaching could look like. And they created a space for us to, to really push the boundaries of what we felt comfortable with and what we were norm, you know, quote unquote normal, um, what we're used to, you know, to teach in normal, right? Uh, and I wanna read you something that Scott wrote, which is actually one of the participants um, that says, uncertainty and the unknown seem to define our present time with regards to safety and health. Uncertainty and the unknown must be conquered and we must protect each other and prioritize those at risk and those less able to care for themselves. We must also remember that in education and in art, our certainty and unknown are generative. Navigating through the unknown gives students authentic ownership of their learning. For teachers and artists, asking questions they don't know the answers to engenders a real partnership between them and gives them a sense of ownership as well. Further, a true struggle with the unknown and uncertainty in teaching can bring a teacher or an artist to what to what they really believe education or art should be. We are now in an entirely new world in regards to education. No one knows what works best. No one knows how anything will turn out and no one knows how long this will go on. This is why more than ever, teachers and artists and principals and schools must have the freedom to experiment. And I'm gonna start right there. And I think part of this is that Arte with Maestro William um, you know, gave me this freedom to experiment, to think about ideas that I wanted to do, that I was doing in the classroom already, um, that I had transferred into my work as a visual artist, as a community, uh, with the Mobile Street Art Cart, with the Family Portraits Project, with um, Collaborative Resistance Print Shop Project, you know, um, and it gave me this opportunity to really think about what it could look like, you know, in this new digital space, at least for me, right? Now, you know, there's, you know, I'm, I'm, I have not invented anything new, right? Like, you know, YouTube series have existed for many, many years, you know, and part of my problem um, with generating th this content at first was the fact that I was like, well, why should I generate anything where there's already so many things happening, right? Um, and what I realized is that the thing that I, that I saw that was not being represented um, was a lot of content that was geared towards, you know, my younger self, right? In Spanish, thinking about, you know, the political aspects of, 
what culturally relevant um, uh, curriculum or art projects could look like, you know? So the YouTube series really ended up becoming, you know, this process for me to, one, you know, generating content that was in Spanish um, and content that was uh, geared towards a public that I, that I work with, right? Like folks in Little Village, folks that are, you know, speak Spanish, folks that speak Spanglish, right? Um, and I know for me as a cis male, you know, it was also a moment for me to, you know, talk about my vulnerabilities, make mistakes on these uh, videos and not edit them, right? Uh, express my fear, right? And the, and the fact that I am afraid, you know? Um, and what does it mean for a cis male of, of color to say like, you know, I'm afraid and, and I'm still afraid of the dark. Um, and thinking about those, the first thing that I started with, you know, is, um, you know, I don't have a, a fancy studio space anywhere in the city. You know, uh, I do have a basement that's kind of cluttered with a bunch of stuff, you know, uh, years of worth of materials from a, being a teaching artist. Um, but what I did create was uh, I ended up creating this wall um, in the back of one of the of the um, rooms in my studio space. Um, and you notice this uh, <laughs> closed out curtain here, you know, like hiding, hiding the mess behind the, the wall, right? Um, but one of the things that I did is I am part of various collectives. Um, I, you know, really try to, you know, think about the visual representation of the multiple complexities of the city of Chicago and thinking about its segregation, but also thinking about the revolutionary work that's being done, you know, by querying the parks, right? Um, by, by thinking about students that are actually doing work, amazing work, the Chicago Act Collective, uh, for the People's Art Collective, right? And a lot of other artists, um, Black Lives Matter, you know, a lot of other arts organizations and collectives that are doing amazing work that I look on for inspiration uh, in the content that I create. Now, after this, um, I really started thinking about, you know, what kind of equipment, you know, I should be using. And, you know, I, be I became really overwhelmed really fast of all the multiple, you know, possibilities. Um, and what I realized is that, you know, um, you know, but budgets are tight, right? So I started really thinking about, you know, how I could use my phone as a way to generate this content um, and, and put it out as, as fast as I could, you know? So I just ended up purchasing a, um, um, oh my goodness, what are these things called again? The tripod? Well, yeah, tripod, but also like the actual connection to hold the phone, the phone, oh. right? Um, and the biggest, the biggest thing was like this uh, lapel, you know, microphone, which I like totally felt fancy, you know, because I was like, this is official, right? Like now I'm in the big leagues now, right? <laughs> uh, you know, which was, uh, I ended up getting one that had a split with two lapel microphones because I'm trying to convince my 14 and 16 year old to co-host out there with Maestro William. They haven't bought in, but you know, soon, soon, you know? Um, and I'm hoping that again, you know, like once the pandemic is over, you know, that we'll, I'll actually be able to invite guests, you know, uh, in, in spirit of like, you know, Bob Ross and, you know, um, other children's shows. You know, and what I end up doing, right, is like I end up, I have, I'm a Mac user, right? So like I end up using um, iMovie to uh, edit, you know? But again, like there isn't like tons and tons of editing that is happening. Um, and then I use like free apps to be able to capture PDFs and JPEGs for the books that I'm reading. Um, or even like just for examples of the artwork that I'm creating uh, and then posting them on. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do was like thinking about Maxine Green releasing the imagination, which says imagination is an important, is important, is as important in the lives of teachers as it is in the lives of, of their students. And I think, you know, thinking about imagination as a way to really think about the possibilities, just not only as artists and art makers, but also in thinking about the stories that we want to tell and reimagining, you know, what kind of narratives do we want to tell about ourselves and the communities that we live in. You know, um, and in that sense, you know, I've really been trying to highlight a lot of the books, um, my own favorite children's books, not only as a way to connect with, 
you know, other children, but really thinking about children of all ages, right? And thinking about as adults, like how do we end up creating content that allows us to be, you know, one to play, that allows us to question what kind of stories are being told about us, and also allows us to imagine, you know, and create the world that we actually want to live in. And one of the other things that I like to uh, play around with, you know, um, is thinking about, you know, this particular quote by Augusto Boal from Theater of the Oppressed, where it says, theater itself is not, a, uh, is not revolutionary, it is a rehearsal for the revolution, right? And thinking about these particular videos, you know, not as end products of something, but the beginning, you know, of conversations that I want to have with uh, not only my students, but, you know, Whoever, whoever is willing to listen, you know, whoever, whoever is willing to have a conversation with me. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. And one thing that I'll say before I end, because I know, uh, you know, we, we have limited time and, and a big part of this, a big part of this conversation is, you know, engaging with you all is really thinking about, you know, what kind of content I'm, I'm trying to create and even thinking about as the, as the series or the episodes that I create as they go on, you know, what kind of content I wanna continue creating, right? And one of the things that I'm thinking right now is really being able to respond to the conversations that I see people having, you know, and thinking about how can I break those conversations down for myself so they're accessible, to younger children, right? But also they're they're accessible to, you know, plan a C for for you know adults as well. So I'm gonna stop right there, Ellie, and then have you. Yeah, thank you so much, Willie, for that presentation. Uh, at this point, we're gonna open it up. We have about five minutes for questions, which I realize is not a ton of time for 40 folks, but don't worry we will be uh, back in a setting where we can sort of talk a little bit more amongst each other. But anything directly related to uh, William's presentation right now, if anyone has any questions, um, now's a great time. Oh, and you can unmute yourself and, and say them. Hi, uh, Lily, I have a question. Thank you so much for the presentation. It's really beautiful and um, I'm really enjoying it. You had brought up um, uncertainty and unknown that can be really generated for people. And I'm wondering, like, how do you navigate times for, um, like, stories or art that you're working with or you're feeling, like, uh, sense of like the unknown or uncertainty because I know like for myself self, sometimes it's like part of the process but it can feel so like overwhelming and dreadful at points um so I'm wondering like how do you take care of yourself or like what do you do to like root yourself like when you're feeling that yeah I mean I think um I, it's it's an emotional roller coaster you know, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to try and be as transparent and vulnerable as possible. Today's a good day, right? I'm going to quote in the famous words of Ice Cube, um, you know, but I think part of it is, you know, like I, I really try and surround myself around amazing people. You know, I'm, I'm part of various uh, collectives and collaborators in the city, you know, where we like, I try and check in with folks, you know, um, but you know it's 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 an emotional roller coaster right like i think um you know definitely making the videos gives me a lot of joy you know uh but it's also you know it's a reminder right like that i'm not with my students i'm not with i'm not out in the streets working with the people that i want to work with you know so it's it's this double edged sword i want to say you know where it's just like you know i'm getting a little tear eyed right now you know just thinking about it but also, in, in all honesty, you know, it's like it's it's these moments, right, of of community with with you all right now. You know, that is a reminder. It's like you know what this we're we're all experiencing this, and we're all you know thinking about what um we're, we're all being vulnerable together, right? And and it doesn't feel as alone. We have a question from Sebastian in the chat. Uh, he asks. Are there any practices to tapping into vulnerability? What are some practices to tap into our cultural, ancestral, and personal experiences as a Latino uh, ex 
growing up in Chicago? Man, that's a, that's a, Sebastian, we, we can have a, let's have a conversation, you know, because I think, um, you know, there, like, it definitely exists, you know, but I think one of the, one of the things that I've been really interested in engaging through this, this video series, and just in the work that I do, right, is just the role of, you know, how my brown, you know, body is, politicize and criminalize, you know, not only in this digital space, right, but when I'm teaching, when I'm walking, right, and I think, you know, there's, I, th I think there needs to, there needs to be more spaces, right, for, for us to think about this vulnerability and for us to, you know, dissect it, you know, I know, um, you know, there's been various conversations I'm part of this amazing group called the Chicago Act Collective, you know, and um, we're constantly reminding ourselves, right, that uh, the fear of failure and guilt is rooted in, you know, patriarchal systems of capitalism and white supremacy, right? And, and it's, it's a constant thing that I have to unlearn, right, and allow myself to cry and allow myself to feel shitty, right? Like, but also re reminding myself, you know, that like my work is important, you know, that I am enough to myself, right? But it's this constant unlearning and learning, you know, as, as we're doing this, so. We've got maybe time for one more question, if anyone has any. I just had a quick question. I was wondering, um, how do you cultivate imagination or how do you access your imagination when you're in a rut or uh, especially how do you match your imagination with your students, people that you're trying to create curriculum for? I watch a lot of cartoons. Uh, <laughs> I try to play as much as possible, um, you know, not only with my own children, you know, but with, with children in my neighborhood, with the students that I work with. Uh, with children of all ages, you know, out in the out in the neighborhoods that I work in and live in, um, you know, I'm I'm you know I'm you know I'm a teacher, right? Like I'm constantly reading theory, um, and and part of that is is that playfulness of like challenging my own notions and where my ideas are rooted, right? Like what like where where did grading, right? Like where did, you know, thinking, I'm reading a lot of stuff on assessment right now and thinking about grading, you know, and, and, and equity. Uh, but like, where do these notions of, of knowledge come from, right? And I think, um, um, you know, it's, it's one of the places where, where I kind of sit and think about it. And, and of course, like making, right? Like, as a, as a procrastinator, you know, it, I, I can't just sit to make stuff, right? Like I need deadlines and I need to be held accountable to someone else, right? Because if I'm like, William, just make to make, I'll put it off, right? Like I will definitely put it off. So like definitely being around other folks where we're deciding like, hey, we're going to make something for this particular cause or for this organization or for this particular purpose. Um, generates, you know, a little bit of anxiety, you know, but I, I realized that I like thrive for that, like balance of anxiety and, you know, rush of like, I got to make something, right? Because I'm going to show someone else. Uh, but definitely, you know, like look at other artists work, right? Like work of, of artists that I admire, you know, folks in the community that are doing amazing work that are, are inspirational and also like reminding them like, hey, you're dope and I love your work. Right, because I think we're all in in these spaces where sometimes we we don't think we're doing enough, and and others are admiring the work that we do. Well, thank you all for your questions and Willie for the answers. Uh, at this point, we're gonna break out into some small groups, uh, and sort of in the spirit of of Willie's presentation and thinking about what niches we can fill, what we can sort of bring to um, a, a body of work or community that maybe isn't already there. Um, 
and questions will sort of be aimed around uh, identifying that and and sort of thinking about how we might collaborate with one another. Uh, so you can find those questions uh, in the agenda. I will link it again because I'm not sure if the chat is visible to folks that join uh, partway through the meeting, um, but you can find them at the top of page three. Uh, and you'll be sorted into a random group of participants uh, and we'll have maybe 15 minutes to go through those questions. So if anyone in your group doesn't uh, have access to the agenda or is calling in, just make sure that if you can read the questions, you're sort of like sharing them with them and just to be mindful of your participation, don't hog the mic, et cetera. You all got this. Cool, so we'll come back in about 15 minutes. Welcome back, folks. Hope that was a good, productive conversation. Wow, lots of waves. This is lovely. Uh, we're still recording just as an FYI, so if you wanna, don't know if that changes anything. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to get some, some time to sort of share out. Um, if anyone wants to maybe talk a little bit about what they uh, talked about in their groups, it'd be great to hear from maybe two to three groups if that feels good to you all. You can just unmute yourselves and share out. Hi, Kieran Kring. Hey, Karen. Hi. So I had William and Katie in my group. Katie, whose last name I cannot pronounce, but nonetheless. So we, we got to the first question and then we were off to the races. We tr tried to get through the second question and we we sort of already covered probably everything you wanted us to discuss, which was we discussed our mediums and what our, our ambitions for them and what we wanted to see um, more conversations around. And um, so, so we had, um, we're t we talked about um, also um, media that we weren't necessarily practicing, but we were looking at into practicing. So um, I'm going to out William and, and tell you that he's looking at making a puppet show. So and go getting going public with it. And uh, Katie is working on um, creating books and she just got herself a press. That's beautiful. I, Willie, I've got someone to connect you to once we're done with this for the puppet thing. Um, anyone else want to share out anything they found, things they're interested in working on, uh, any room for collaboration? It looks like Aaliyah has been called out. I don't know if Aaliyah you want to share. I was in the group with Aaliyah. <laughs> <laughs> Any insights, India? Um, I think we talked about um, we talked about public newsrooms that Aaliyah had been doing prior to a lot of things being locked down and remote. And then I talked about how you foster learning remotely um, and it was my first time being in a breakout group on a zoom meeting and I was really nervous even though I've led trainings with breakout rooms I haven't had to go in them um, so it was cool I guess to just generally connect with someone I didn't know I just want to add one thing um India that you said that I thought was like so interesting is like during this time how do you know if like the effective ways that you're communicating different messages to folks are really reaching them um and who aren't we reaching and so that's just something that even though like with the work that we're doing as journalists at mississippi today and then like thinking through our public newsrooms i think that's something we should think more about like who are the people we would usually reach that we aren't and who are the people that 
we don't usually reach that we aren't. And so, especially like for folks in the Delta, which is where I am, a lot of folks don't have access to computers or access to um, internet. So it's like, how do we get that information to those folks who need it during this time? And we have maybe time for a couple more contributions. Does anyone want to uh, maybe on a similar vein talk about uh, the obstacles of, of, of convening remotely now or just anything else that was interesting that you wanted to share out from your group? You know, Ali, I, I wanted to add really quickly to Aliyah's point. I think one of my um, apprehensions to do this um, like YouTube channel was the fact that, you know, in, in my practice is really about going into spaces where, you know, art making isn't always necessarily happening, right? Um, and I was super conscious, right, of like trying to figure out like, like why, it's the why, right? Like there's so much content already, you know? And I think for, for me, you know, as particular in this time, it was a way to like reconnect, knowing that I was not necessarily gonna reach, you know, the, the, the people the, that, I'm, that I'm interested in reaching, you know? But it was also like creating this moment of possibilities you know, to say, you know, there there might not be a vast network of, you know, like social justice curriculum in Spanish, but like this is like a tiny little, you know, um, grain of, of, of sand, you know, that now people can be like, wait a minute, William's doing a, you know, a so-so job. I could probably do this better, you know, like, let me add to that. Right, and, and, it, and that was like the hopes of that too, right? Like to be able to generate more conversation as to like, why doesn't this exist in more places, right? Totally, yeah. Anyone else before we sort of start to do our closing announcements? Uh, just as a reminder, we will have time after that to sort of come back and sort of have more of a free form chat, um, which I already see a couple of seeds that are starting to bud, but um, anything else that you all wanted to share about the breakout group before we sort of start to wrap up the more structured portion of the workshop? Um, for mine, I was very, um, I don't know, I, ke I can't stop thinking about it, but we were talking about um, alternative endings um, and how, you know, if, if you just had enough imagination, you know, you could, even if the ending can't quite play itself out in the real world, it's still, good to use the imagination. So I don't know how we got into this, but we talked about like, you know, for some gang initiations, like there's shooting of other people. But what if like, and I was like, what if the shooting was of like a speed camera, you know, redirecting that energy, <laughs> you know, not to be not to be promoting anything crazy, but it was just cool to have that little space. And I think that's something that I'm leaving with today. And um, it was good to share in our group to really like harness your imagination. Totally. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, and is this, I just have a question, Nancy, is that around uh, fiction writing? Is that just around like thinking about alternative endings in the world? Um, I think Nicole brought up my other, if she wants to jump in real quick, um, she brought up sure. a book. If I can jump in and um, help Nancy out a bit. Um, when we were starting off about um, our, our skill sets or, or things that we're good at and, and want to hone more, I led with that how I'm a poet and that I am also a woman of a certain age so that a lot of social media is lost on me. But in an effort to have some kind of social media footprint, I started an Instagram page with the idea in mind of posting poetry, but what it's morphed into is me ranting about all things political, especially recently with um, George Floyd's murder. And um, from there on to poetry, I brought up um, Eve Ewing and her book, Electric Arches. I don't know how many on the in the group have read any of those poems, but she has a collection of poems that she titles Retellings, and they are all about some kind of racially motivated incident, which is horrible and mean. And as she's describing it to us as readers, she breaks off and the poem even switches from a font to a handwriting and she changes the ending. So whereas there are a group of police who are questioning nine-year-old boys, 
suddenly the nine-year-old boys jump on their bicycles and their bicycles can fly up into the sky and the police are looking at them fly away in awe. So that's pretty much what started our alternate ending conversation. And we wanted to use William's permit, the permission that he gave us to use our imagination. So we took it and ran with it. And maybe we'll do something more with that idea as a group or we put it out there and planted the seed. So who knows what will happen next? Thank you so much for sharing, Nicole. Um, I think that's a perfect sort of point to uh, just close now and um, sort of just remind you all of, of uh, a couple housekeeping things before we get to continue chatting. Um, but yeah, just the first thing is just to say thank you all for joining us. We are still very much experimenting with this form of a Zoom workshop. We used to do these in person. Uh, this is our second one that is digital. Uh, and so we're still figuring out uh, the medium, I guess you could say. Um, so anyway, to that end, uh, if you all want to sort of take a look at the, the last page in the agenda, there's a survey um, that you all can take to sort of like let us know how we're doing. Uh, and share any suggestions of how you'd like to see these go forward. Uh, you don't have to do that right now, but if you want to, you totally can. Uh, the other thing is that we have a couple just resources and links also at the end of the agenda. Um, there's a link there around free video software that Willie has posted, a couple of other texts um, sort of around art making and community. Feel free to check those out. Uh, and, and yeah, and just to sort of remind you all, we do these kinds of workshops every month. They're typically the last Thursday of the month. Next month, uh, we have Chicago Votes sort of sharing what work they've been doing around protecting our voting rights um, now that we are all sheltered in place, or rather many of us are sheltered in place. Um, and if you want to get updates on those, you can follow us on social media. I'll also send out an email after this with uh, where you can find us so that you can sort of follow along if you'd like to stay involved. Um, and a big, big shout out to Willie for agreeing to host. It's so lovely to get to hear from you and to learn a little bit more about your practice uh, and to, yeah, have your work be a point of departure for this uh, really energizing conversation. Yeah. I don't know if you want to plug anything or if you have anything that you want to leave us before we sort of chat for a little while. No, I just want to say thank you all for, you know, being here and creating the space for for me to share, a, you know, a little snippet of time, you know, um, you know, and I look forward to seeing you in real life, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, sometime, sometime soon, you know, but looking forward to, you know, hopefully getting to to work with you all at some point, you know, but thank you. Cool, thank you, Willie. Um, so yeah, I just wanna sort of uh, direct you guys' attention to another thing on the agenda. It looks like you all have already found it. There's this little sort of stay in touch section um, where you can leave your email and maybe what you're interested in, anything you're working on. Uh, this is not so much so City Bureau can stay in touch with you. It's more just for one another. Um, a big part of wanting to do the public newsroom series is sort of having folks who might not usually meet one another um, have a space to talk around topics they might be interested in. Uh, and so that's why we're sort of doing this addendum to the public newsroom where uh, we have maybe half an hour still on this call to just kind of chat about whatever we want to chat about. Um, I know that Willie's presentation was pretty brief given the broadness of the topics that he covered. So uh, if anyone sort of wanted to um, extend a conversation, if y'all were interested in any topics that we didn't get to touch on, um, we have some space now to just sort of keep like imagining and, and talking together. William, can I ask you a question? Um, I'm, I'm, was um, like inspired and excited to hear what you were saying about um, classrooms as, or teaching spaces as uh, places where both the teachers and the students are actually asking questions that they don't know the answers to um, and are like all engaging imaginatively. Um, I'm curious to know if your 
if as a facilitator of those experiences, if you find that you're you're doing that differently over Zoom than in person, or sort of how that's happening differently over over digital mediums than in person. Yeah, thank you, Claire. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely been a shift. You know, I think um, you know I want to first say that a lot of the the um, you know thinking about like inquiry right as as a primary teaching tool like has really come from a lot of the work that I've done with you know both the, at the Pochkali and uh, as a teaching artist with um, with Kate the Chicago Arts Partnership for Education um, and you know what I what I'm realizing is that you know. It, it feels like this new format is like a new classroom, right? Um, you know, it's it's a it's a new classroom, you know, with like some folks have like really nice desks, you know, and others don't have a desk at all, you know. And and I think it's um, you know, one of the things that I've been trying to, you know, navigate through is, you know, like not not even like saying like we're now we're going to come together and we're going to make all these art projects right but like just creating a space for us to like feel comfortable with this new space right and 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 again kind of um sit in our own vulnerability and discomfort you know as things like don't work and you know just just yesterday i was on a google meet with a student, you know, and I got like kicked out twice, you know, because like my internet connection was like a little funky. Um, and like me coming back and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, like thank you for being patient with me, right? And 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 modeling some of those, you know, moments of um of being uncomfortable and asking students is like, well, how what do you think of all this? Right. But I think it's it's the questions, right? Like that leads us to to generate more like deeper deeper meaning in the artwork that we're creating or whatever we're creating um but it's but it's not necessarily about the the end product but about the connection that we're making at that moment you know and i like to see the 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 artwork at least that i get to generate with other folks like that that's the artifact of the relationship and conversations that we had. Thank you. And just to give a shout out, uh, Claire runs a really great puppet theater company called Rough House. So uh, I heard the thing about the puppets, Willie, and I just wanted to give you a heads up. <laughs> Uh, any other questions for Willie uh, or just thoughts for other folks on this call? I had a, a question about, um, you mentioned that you're a member of um, a couple of artist collectives, William, and I, I'd be curious to know a little bit more about those groups and, and what, what you do. Yeah, um, so I'm part of the so I'm part of a collaborative called the Mobilize um, Create Collaborative, uh, the Mobilize Creative Collaborative, which is uh, myself. I have a mobile street art cart, um, Mario Spont Lemus and Andres Lemus Spont uh, that used to run the Frank and Tomobile, but now it's it's like this drum machine, you know, thing, you know, but it's like pedal powered. And also um, Akil Charleston, which runs the mobile music box. Um, and we're all like pedal powered, you know, projects that go out into the different neighborhoods and, and make out in the street. So that's one, one group that I'm part of. I'm also part of the Chicago Act Collective, which is a group of about 15 of us, uh, musicians, graphic designers, teachers, um, anthropologists, you know, folks that are interested in generating graphics for grassroots movements. Um, you know, and, and, you know, we also like go camping together, you know, and, and have dinners together and things like that. Um, uh, but most of our work is, is in supporting grassroots movements and we're not, you know, in Chicago, um, with graphics. And then I'm also part of the Just Seeds, um, 
Collaborative, which is a larger uh, collaborative of artists in America, uh, or the Americas, I should say. Um, there's folks in, in Canada, uh, here in the US, and in Mexico. And then also, you know, I'll, I'll plug in, you know, I'm part of a Chicago Teachers Union, which is a whole other collective, <laughs> right? And part of the UIC uh, union as well, which is different collectives, but you know, similar ideas. Is anyone else on this call in other collectives that they want to plug? Because I feel like that's a really good way for folks to stay in touch with each other. Um, Katie speaking. Oh. Um, if anyone, I'm part of a group for Armenian artists and arts workers. Um, and trying to gather through yeah, the diaspora um, different projects, um, primarily publishing. But if anyone here identifies as Armenian and artist or arts worker, um, I put my email on the list, but Katie Garitlian, um, we're always looking for more folks to hold together. Oh, sorry, I think I muted myself. More broadly, if anyone is working on any projects or is doing sort of like any interesting community oriented work, art related work, anything that folks can either plug into or tap into. Um, this is another good space to sort of share that out. I have um, an idea in mind that, that it still needs a little bit more uh, thought for it, but um, my project is looking at the relationship between migration and industry. Uh, and how COVID has highlighted a lot of that. Um, but I wanted to step away from the idea of, uh, of simple publication and more public forms of art in terms of sharing uh, stories that way. Um, so I guess my question would be like, if there's any uh, ideas or, or people that I should be talking to to collaborate with, um, Could you repeat the first part of that, Sebastian, to remind folks where to be pointing you? Sure. So the story itself is is looking at industry's relationship to migration in Chicago in particular. Um, it's following uh, a Latinx history in the city. So that's the project itself. But what I'm hoping to do is, is just share that when it's done. Uh, through other forms of publications, rather it be like zines or public displays of photographs or art or something like that, where people can kind of walk and follow. Um, obviously, that's going to be later on, but uh, does that answer your question, more or less? Cool. Um, Mark Fisher has been doing a really interesting project. He's He does a, a zine project, I think it's called Public Collectors. But he's been he's been publishing um, he's he's been self publishing for many many years. He's very active in like the Chicago Zine community. Uh, right now, he's doing a project called Corin Zine. He actually made a great video about it. It's that's on YouTube. Um, but he's been publishing. Um, he's been collaborating with an artist every day of the of the um, quarantine and publishing these kind of broadsheets that he's been pasting around the city. Um, and so he's, he's interested in like directly putting those in the community. Um, and uh, he might be someone to talk to about, um, about like just tapping into the zine community and, sh and sharing, sharing that publicly. I also know um, Sebastian Irene Romulo, who was uh, also a, an alum of City Bureau's Fellowship Program, and who is the is one of the founders of the outlet Cicero Independiente. Has um, 
has made some scenes herself and also has some really great comments about um, other places that she's seen zines, especially in Little Village and Cicero. Thank you, everybody. When you say, um, Sebastian, the um, migration and industry in Chicago, I'm thinking like maps and like really large scale maps where people can sort of like pinpoint themselves and like get like that tactile feeling of like strings and stuff. And so, of course, in my head pops up, um, you know, Tanika Johnson and um, Paula, who helped her create that map and that whole display. Um, the the fold and map project so yeah <laughs> that's what sort of sprang to mind I like see like all this like yarn going all around you know a map and I don't know it feels cool to me <laughs> cool I also just wanted to read out loud for anyone who missed it in the chat um, Nancy says she's part of Veggie Mijas, Chicago, if anyone is interested in intersectional veganism for women or folks of color, uh, which sounds really beautiful also. Uh, I don't know if Nancy is still in the chat, uh, but just wanted to put that out there. Cool. Uh, if anyone has any other sort of projects that they wanna workshop together or questions for Willie, um encourage you all to share those out now. Hi everyone. My name is Natalie. Um, I would just like to share an idea. Um, I appreciate this platform a lot and everyone that's taking time to be here. Um, I currently work with Dream Chicago, which is an art nonprofit um, in Chicagoland um, that uses the power of dreaming to bring people together. Um, and right now we're kind of reprogramming in this new digital world. Um, and we're working on two projects that I would like to just put out there in case some, this resonates with someone. Um, the first one is we are, the founder actually wrote a children's book. Um, it's a poetic children's book that actually I co-illustrated. So it's near and dear to my heart. Um, and we are currently launching each page um, one page at a time on social media. So if you go to Dream Chicago on either Facebook or Instagram, you can see the pages live right now. Um, but we're currently looking for a publisher. Um, we have the illustrations and the words and we want to make it accessible for people. Um, and we don't really know how to do that. And so if anyone's on the call or listening in and might have a resource um, about publishing a children's book, we're not aiming to be bestseller. Um, <laughs> that's not the purpose necessarily. I just want to have it reach as many people as possible. Um, and so I'm very open to hearing any kind of ideas on publishing a children's book. Um, it's 34 pages, if that helps anything, and it's very poetically um, said. <laughs> um, and so it's not like a big chapter book. Um, but like I said, the words and the illustrations are already out there. Um, and my information's on this sheet, if anyone wanted to reach out to me. Um, and then for a little bit more of your time, another project that we're working on, um, it's a live stream art experiment that's actually going on on Facebook, um, where I'm curating, I'm kind of doing an open casting call for artists of any medium. We've had dancers, musicians, singers, um, painters on. Um, and we just did one this last weekend on cosmic pause and unexpected symmetry. Um, and we invited all sorts of artists of any medium to respond to that live on a live feed. Um, and it was really beautiful. These artists did not know each other um, when we kept it purposely separate until we went live on the experiment. Um, and so this is gonna be a monthly series. And so any artists that's open and willing to play. Um, we would love to have you. We're talking this coming month about transparency and stripping down to a nakedness um, and what that looks like. Um, so dancers without music or painters that don't have sight um, or whatever that looks like in your art form. Those are just a couple ideas. Um, that's another project that we're working on. So if that 
sparks anything in you um, or if you'd like to connect, um, you could reach out to me, at Natalie at dreamchicago.org, but all that's written on um, in the notes on the side. And I really appreciate your time. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Natalie. I Did you share what the children's book is about? Mm. Um, so Imogene Imagining. Um, Imogene, that story was just birthed out of the author, who is also the founder of Dream Chicago, um, in one city. It just came to her. Um, it's loosely about a girl following her dream and what that means as a bigger picture, um, speaking her truth, honoring what's true to her and how much power that holds. Um, but I see it as a broader picture. Um, it is about living in your truth beyond a children's book. It resonates with me personally, um, even just illustrating in the vulnerability, like William was talking about, the, the vulnerability and uncomfortableness of imperfections that that shows um, to step up to the plate to showcase your dreams is, the bigger picture that I read it as, um, which really sparked me to be like, I'm on board with this project. I would love to be a part of it and help illustrate in the ways that I can. Oh, thank you, Nicole. I just saw that you wrote a link. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Cool. Um, um, if if no one else has anything to share, I think we'll we'll about wrap this up. Any last bites? Okay, beautiful. Um, oh, uh, okay. Yes, Bettina wrote. Amanda Trubeck has a book called "So You Want to Publish a Book." Good oh, talk, perfect. Natalie. Thank you, Bettina. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, great. Well, thank you all so much for sticking around and sort of engaging with our little experiment. Um, Thank you. Huge shout out to Bettina also for typing closed captions this whole time. I have such you. a talent. <laughs> um, thanks to Willie. Thank you to all of you who stuck around and sort of chatted and shared out. Um, I hope that you all sort of try and stay in touch. Uh, and yeah, hope to see you all at the next public newsroom again. I'll send out an email with follow up materials. Um, Willie, is there anything else you'd like to share just to give you the space? Oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for engaging in the conversation. You know, let's be thinking.